So I wanted to do a quick video on all the good stuff in Logic that can help you with dubstep tracks. Now I know that's not a true dubstep track and I know it's a little bit polite. I'm not claiming to be like a, a dubstep art artist, but I'm taking some inspiration because I think it's probably one of the most innovative areas at the moment. A bit like Trifonic. I love the Trifonic stuff and the way that he kind of takes bit from, bits from dubstep, bits from drum, drum and bass, integrates it into his own style. Um, and I think some of the things that I show you now, you can take to the next extreme um, and, and use them and, and come up with a sort of really good uh, dubstep sounds. So let's get straight to it. There's quite a lot to um, quite a lot to cover. Um, so the first thing, the the kind of inspiration for this was uh, a sound pack that I downloaded from a guy called Sounds Logical. Um, so ah, I've lost the link. Uh, let me just uh, pull it up for you quickly. So. If you go to YouTube and you type in Sounds Logical, this is the guy here. Um, so uh, this is website, got loads of good sound design tutorials. And then if you, sorry, this is his YouTube page. And then if you go down to his uh, Sounds Guru page, um, it's got a much more com paid for but you've got a much more complete um, guide to synthesis on ES2 and then you can download some of his, uh, his patches as well and you decide how much to pay. Um, so uh, the sounds that I used from that sound pack were this husky bass sound and the things that I did to change it up were I added an overdrive um, so I was basically to Get add more presence and, and get it to cut through the track a bit more. Turn up the tone, not too much drive because uh, then it becomes difficult and it starts fighting with all the other sounds in the track. Um, Space Wub, uh, really another really good sound. Um, on this one, I changed the auto filter settings a little bit, so I turn the cut off right down, turn the resonance up, and you get this almost kind of um, sort of uh, it almost turns it into a sound effect. So that's my uh, that's the kind of that's the core base that's the answer base. Um, then what else do you use? Yeah, next sound absolutely love this one and it's the uh, the wind up sound. It's called Sutty and Sweep, I think. Um, so I think I could listen to that all day. Um, very nice. Um, the only thing I did with this one was I added a delay designer to add that ping-ponging and, and delay effect onto it. Um, so yeah, th th those were quite a good inspiration to start the uh, start the track. Um, the next thing that I can show you is on the S2 as well. It's kind of opened my eyes to the fact that it can be quite a capable little synth. Um, you don't necessarily need uh, certainly when you're starting off. You don't necessarily need Native Instruments Massive, although that is the kind of the, the dubstep synth um, so just using like the random function even you can get it to come up with kind of quite dissonant sounds on its own so turn the randomization up a little bit so that won't work in every style of music, but for dubstep, you know, it, it works off kind of these really sort of nasty, gritty, grimy sounds. Um, so you can get the S2 to do a little bit of the work for you um, just by randomizing it. Um, and all it's, you just, it sounds like you've spent hours programming it and all, all you've done is kind of sat there and go, oh yeah, that's a nice one. Um, 
so um, that's the ES2. The next thing I was going to show you was a few of uh, the Logix plugins that are quite good um, to kind of really mess up the sound. So I've got this Evoc filter bank which sits under filters, Evoc 20. Um, and just with a bit of experimentation, you can get it to kind of change the sound. So I just downloaded a few um, samples from Loop Masters uh, from their free samples. Um, sorry, let me just solo that track so you can hear. You know, radic, dop it out. You know, radic, man, I'm, you know, dop it out. So if you add in the uh, filter bank, you know we make it, 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 So um, you can get some of those really sort of distorted and messed up sounds using that filter bank. Um, on some of these, uh, this is a real whistle stop tour. So the idea behind the tutorial is is really to just introduce you and and, and get you um, going on some of the different uh, plugins. Um, and then if you want to make a request on anything that you want a more in depth tutorial on, happy to do that when I get time. Um, but I just wanted to get all the information out there to you. Um, next one is the uh, vocal transformer. So. Zip through its presets. So again, some kind of formant synthesis going on there. Um, and this one, I think it's just a case of diving in and actually there's not many controls. So all you need to do is get in there and actually have a, a play around and so uh, yeah, useful little plugin, especially for those uh, kind of distorted and messed up dubstep sounds. And um, I like Kane Dubstep. He's on my is on my list of um, uh, subscribe sub people I subscribe to. Um, and I'm sure he uses quite a lot of Logic plugins on on his stuff. Um, the other one, a lot simpler plugin, um, just two controls really, or three with that. Um, <laughs> So if you put them all together, um, you get a sound that wouldn't work in other type styles of music, but you can get this kind of yeah. So um, so just like really experiment with those three. Um, the other one, probably Logic's best plugin, is the tape delay. So if you set the groove to sixty six point six six percent. I'm going to get rid of those LFO and flutter rates just for a second. So you get that classic, classic dub sound. Um, you can use the freeze function to kind of get it uh, to catch a bit of audio and get it to loop it around for you. And then, um, if you want some kind of real sort of sound effects type sounds, okay, so you can play around with the LFO and the flutter rate. Um, so that's the um, that's the tape delay. I know I'm racking through stuff here quite quickly, but um, just want to sh get all the information out. As I said, um, the other thing I wanted to show you was the M verb. So um, I've got this fairly, it's quite a weedy snare on its own, um, and it's just there to really to back up the main beat. It's not meant to be the um, kind of the, the main snare in the track. But to kind of really get it to fill out a little bit, I've used this Enverb plugin. And I've seen Subscape do a tutorial on this as well. Um, so let's have a listen. Or maybe some of the. So a nice enough sound, but just kind of fairly, um, just a very basic snare. Now, if you add in the Enverb or the Envelope in Reverb, which can be found under the Reverb section. Basically, what you get is the ability to um, 
determine the shape of the reverb that sounds. So if we have a listen with this inserted, So again, for other styles of music, that's way too unnatural. Um, but you add it into the dubstep track and you get this really kind of nice, aggressive reverb. Um, and the other track that I used that on was, I took the affected sound, um, turned it in its, into its own audio track, and then I just completely chopped it. And then I inserted a whole channel of effects. Now. There's no real sort of rhyme or reason to these effects. I just uh, selected, I, I just experimented, added new ones in, played around with them, and until you get uh, what sounds good. And um, you know, it, th th there are no ru rules getting there and just experiment. Um, so if you have a listen to it on its own um, with with that uh, M verb snare, it doesn't sound so much on its own. But then when you add it to the main beat, it just adds that bit of extra, customizes it, makes it your own. Okay, the last sound I had on this track, um, and you probably wouldn't use this in a regular dubstep track because I think it's a bit too polite, um, but it was from the Sculpture Synth, um, and it was just kind of a pad sound that I, I recorded. I then rendered it to audio and added sort of different effects, so I've effectively got two copies of the same sound, just slightly different, just to add a bit more interest. Um, and what you end up with is what we had. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's I know that was a really quick walkthrough, but as I say, I'll do some more videos in the future, um, especially if there are any specific requests for any ones. Um, and yeah, I hope that's useful, and I'll see you on another video if it was. Cheers, bye-bye.